外国面孔，中国心。I say I have a Western face, a Guaido face. With the Chinese heart, everybody is so concerned about the U.S. now and chips、mm. and semiconductors and all that. Nothing gives me more pleasure than having Huawei come out with the 16 telephone. 兰桂坊之父寄予香港未来。Beauty of Hong Kong is one country, two systems. It's the future, Greater、mm. Bay Area. I joke around with the press a lot. I said it's faster to go to Shenzhen today than to go to your house in Hong Kong in traffic. 风云对话专访香港兰桂坊集团主席盛志文。郑志文一九四八年生于德国，成长于加拿大。因生活所迫，辍学务工，通过打零工来补贴家用。机缘巧合下，十九岁的郑志文从加拿大来到香港，凭借其敏锐的商业嗅觉和果断的商业投资，捕捉到了中国改革开放带来的巨大红利，在香港。赚到了人生当中的第一个一百万美金，成功打造了兰桂坊商业帝国，被誉为“兰桂坊之父”。二零零八年，他放弃加拿大国籍，并加入中国国籍，同时也将兰桂坊带入了内地市场。盛志文这个名字虽因兰桂坊而广为人知。但他初到香港，却是做成衣外贸生意，靠卖成衣一战成名，积累下亿万身家。Well, good afternoon, Dr. Zeman. It's great to have you on Talk with World Leaders. Thank you very much for having us in your very beautiful office here in Lan Kui Fong. Thank you. It's great to be here, and hopefully、uh, we can have a good interview. Let's begin with your story with Hong Kong,、yeah. your love for Hong Kong. You are household name in Hong Kong,、um, having arrived here when you're only a teenager. You know, I read about the the garment business. <laughs>、yeah. Tell us that story. The moment I arrived in Hong Kong, I just loved the energy. Although it was a British colony at the time, it was pre-97. My hardest problem was understanding what the Brits were talking about because their accent was so thick. You know, the Cantonese was okay. But, How was your Cantonese?、Uh, It's not bad. It's not It's, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a place. Hong Kong was a, a place that you can have a dream at night,、yeah. wake up the next morning, and make it a reality, because it really was a city that catered to the world. People from all countries from all over the world here, and also Hong Kong was a place that you were dealing with the world. In Canada, I was selling only to Canadian customers.、Mm -hmm. In Hong Kong, you can export. To the world, because everybody was coming out here to do business. I, you know, I learned one thing about doing business in every country. Every、mm. culture is different.、Mm -hmm. Every culture, a different way of doing business, different way people are brought up.、Sure. And so, the important thing is not to change the culture.、Mm. The important thing is to fit in the way you do business into the culture,、mm. and then you can be successful. You know, many Americans used to come out, and they always wanted to change the way. Oh, we do business this way or that way. Mm. Doesn't work that way because culture is older than you are, you know, and so people don't don't just change overnight. 在不断打开内地市场的同时，盛志文在香港也开启了另一片天地。一九八一年，他在兰桂坊开了一家加州餐厅，白天是餐厅，晚上变身酒吧。这种经营模式啊，在当时颇有创意。八十年代的香港经济腾飞，文娱产业欣欣向荣。当时许多明星都是加州餐厅的常客，兰桂坊见证了香港文化的黄金时代。由此，盛志文不断地收购这一带街区的物业，将兰桂坊发展成为了享负盛名的娱乐休闲圣地，而他也获得了“兰桂坊之父”的称号。And how did that lay the foundation for Lan Kui Fong? Now you know as the father well, of Lan Kui Fong, and well, 40、sure. years ago it, it wasn't well, like this. No, because we used to have buyers coming out from all over the world, and you know,、mm. and, into Hong Kong. And those years, under the British administration,、uh, there weren't a lot of street restaurants as we know today. If you wanted to go to a restaurant, it was usually in a in a hotel where they're used to quite formal. If you didn't have a tie or a shirt. They used to give you, or a jacket. They used to give you a tie, and I never wore a tie in my life. <laughs> I was in the fashion business, and 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 wore jackets. You know, I had designers, and so that's when I decided. You know, we need an area like Lan Kui Fong, street restaurants, street vibe. It's cultural. It's trendy. You know, other places in the world, 
mm. had something like that. New York had the Village, Greenwich Village in the old days, uh, Soho, London had the West End. Mm. And so we decided, decided to open up and we had a designer working for me from the U.S. Okay. He looked around mm -hmm. looking at, at different areas and right. then he came back with what is now called California Tower. It was an old the old California Tower owned by a Malaysian Chinese mm. called Kang Fung uh, Towers. There was a, a grocery store on the ground floor selling fruits and vegetables and all that and then on the second floor was a girly bar. I came there and, and the Feng Soi it just I loved I saw something there. I always say something. Mm -hmm. I look at things not for what they are. Mm -hmm. I look at things for what they could be. So, you know, people that, who do really well mm -hmm. see things differently than the normal per person. You look beyond. Mm -hmm. And I could see that this, even though it was on a slope, the street, and, but it was a, a, a one block from Queens Road, which was the heart of Central, the business yeah. district. And at that time, it was an old rubbish place, yeah. you know, there was, there was not much in a lot of old warehouses, mm -hmm. but I just, I could see the beauty of the potential of the area. Mm -hmm. And so I rented that space for a space and I set up California restaurant and it became very, very famous. Mm -hmm. So many people, stars today, Michelle Yeoh, who won the Academy Award this year, Wong Fei, grew up there, yes. uh, Danny Chan, the singer mm -hmm. before he passed away, Leslie Jung, Jackie Chan. Mm -hmm. It was to me, they were just young mm -hmm. people wanting to have a career. Today, mm -hmm. so many of them are famous. They Chow Yun Fat used to come by. It became just a really great place mm -hmm. to hang out. Yeah. Tabanchi 2019年2月18日,国务院正式发布了粤港澳大湾区发展规划纲要,提出以香港、澳门、广州、深圳四大中心城市作为区域发展的核心引擎。在中央的支持下,大湾区实力无限,潜力无限,持续贡献国家的经
and they'll be coming to Hong Kong again as the gateway to uh, the Greater Bay Area. They have enough people. As one country, two systems, Hong Kong is very, very valuable to China. So that's why I'm very, very bullish mm -hmm. on Hong Kong. Very China bullish. will never let mm -hmm. Hong Kong fail. Mm -hmm. Promising future for Hong Kong, as very, you mentioned, Very Alan. promising. Hong Kong's greatest advantage yeah. is one of the greatest advantages is the one country, exactly. two systems principle. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. I mean, I've been in Hong Kong 55 years, mm -hmm. and I've seen the changes taking place, the ups and the downs. And, you know, after 97, after 1997, many people were leaving Hong Kong because they thought, oh, my God, China's taking over, and I've lived here for so many years, and uh, you know, we're going to become another Chinese city. And uh, I just remember standing in Lan Kwai Fung, and many people come to say goodbye to me. And then two years later, I see the same people back. And I said, oh, you're visiting? No, 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 we moved back. <laughs> they went abroad. It wasn't exactly what they thought. And Hong Kong continued to get stronger and stronger. And so they all moved back. How's business sentiments after COVID now? How is foreign companies, do well, they have confidence foreign, investing in Hong Kong It now? is now, every day, mm -hmm. more and more companies are getting much more comfortable that mm -hmm. Hong Kong is back very, very strong. We've, right. had, we've got uh, financial, so every bank is here, every you know, family offices now are opening up because we've changed the laws according to what, similar yeah. to what Singapore has and whatever, and, and uh, you've got becoming a, f a family office center. Mm -hmm. uh, banking, we have uh, in November, we have the financial convention here from banks all around the world coming to Hong Kong. You can see that things are really, really good. And although there is, mm -hmm. in the world, there's a problem now, of course, between the West and the East. The U.S. is worried about the growth of China, and, and so they, they're doing everything they can to give China a bad name amongst their people. Plus, you have an election going on, which is mm -hmm. normal, so they need to find an enemy. Of course, mm -hmm. China becomes the enemy. But uh, you can see now that I, we say seeing is believing. Come to Hong Kong, get calls all the time. Is it safe? Is it okay to come? And they come here, and they say, it's totally different. Wow, our media is terrible, you know? Mm -hmm. The best thing is they go back and they tell their friends and, and, and so it takes time, you know, but we can really see with the numbers coming back two years after COVID, now we're at 7.53 million, um, we're back to what it was and it'll continue to grow. And there's that feeling now of mm. that Hong Kong is back and mm. is back in, in, in a big way.今年八月，香港财政司司长指出，要把香港的夜市搞活搞旺，巩固复苏当中的各个经济环节。九月十四日，香港启动了首个振兴夜市项目——香港夜缤纷活动，包括超过八十个商场延长了营业时间，恢复
renewed optimism that uh, you know the tourists are back, businesses are back. The world obviously has a problem right now because the world is becoming segmented, you know, into mm. different groups. And as we can see with BRICS now, with China, and, 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 and which I believe very strongly in in the future, mm. U.S. going through their own problems at the moment, mm. uh, high inflation, high interest rates. I believe that going forward, things will get a lot better, especially in this, especially in Asia. Plus, Xi Jinping going to the Middle East, going to Saudi Arabia along with John Lee before, also led a delegation. We can mm. see many of the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, biggest oil producing country in the world. And they are opening offices now in Hong Kong because they want to open up and do business with China right. in a big way. Mm -hmm. They're opening up Mandarin speaking schools in Saudi Arabia. Uh, it's a language that they want to teach their, their, their students, uh, mm. uh, you know, about Kutawa, which mm. is important going forward, you're going to mm. see a difference. Mm. You know, before, of course, U.S. was the biggest trading partner and all that, but uh, mm. slowly, I still think they have to continue to be tra to trade together. Mm. Uh, there's no doubt. Because um, mm -hmm. one thing I learned in, in my fashion business, trading business before, mm. business people don't listen to politics. <laughs> business people go where they can make money. So, Alan, you're saying, you know, although we're seeing this wrestling Sino-U.S. relations, yes. a lot of de-risking rhetoric in the high-tech field, Correct. but the economies are so interlinked, Inter they, have to they can't really separate, you can't really decouple. You know, if mm. China slows down, the world slows down. Mm. Because everyone, whether it's EU, whether it's whether it's the, the uh, America, you know, America, Canada, mm. Western countries, if China's slow, as we can see right now, things are, you know, after COVID, mm. uh, then things are, are, everybody's worried in the world. They, first they talk about decoupling. Mm. <laughs> then they decided, no, can't be, must be de-risking. De the, the crazy thing is when I look at a lot of these senators or whatever, these countries, they've never been to China. <laughs> they talk, uh, but it's politics. They just have to say bad things, you know, it's, totally political. It, it doesn't mean anything. 2008年,九居香港的盛志文放弃了加拿大国籍,拿了香港特区护照和回乡证,成为了一个名副其实的中国人。2019年,国庆70周年,盛志文被邀请到北京参加庆典,站在官礼区,他激动地热泪盈眶
on the Britannia just to have lunch with, with him. Well, it was like history, being part of history, you know, going through, seeing, you know, seeing the boat, you know, the last sailing of the Britannia from here. I was there till four o'clock in the morning with a wet suit because of the rain from before for the British ceremony. Right. You know, going mm. to the Chinese ceremony. Mm. And that kind of was an omen for me of what the future was gonna be like. It was gonna be better under the Chinese. And you became a naturalized Chinese citizen in 2008. In 2008. A in lot of people thought it was a surprising decision. You know, as I said, Mm. I understand China. I've been to almost every city in China, every district. I saw the changes to, taking place in China. Mm. I also, also understood the West because I came from there originally. Yeah. I saw the future. You know, it, being in the fashion business, you always think about tomorrow. You always mm. think ahead. What are you going to be wearing next year? What color are you going to be wearing? Your hemline above the knee, below the knee, all that. So my mind was always trained to think ahead. And mm. so I'm supposed to be this futuristic thinking person. And so I thought to myself, I really, really believe that China will be the system really does work because mm. I saw everybody's life getting better in China. And mm. I saw in the US, everybody's li life getting worse. <laughs> you know, the middle class in the US, 1% of the population <laughs> has 95% of all the wealth of the country. And so great if you're Apple or JP Morgan or one of those big, big uh, companies. But if you're middle class or lower class, you're living paycheck to paycheck in the middle class. Lower class are living in tents in many places. This was not the system that I grew up with, that I knew. And so I thought to myself, China, it's, it's the future. And I am Chinese. I think Chinese. I want to be Chinese. And I got tired of being called a foreigner. And uh, I say I have a Western face, a Guaylo face with a Chinese heart. Because I really and truly believe. This is believe really home for you. Hong I, Kong it's is home. home. Oh, especially after the security law was passed in 2019 in Hong Kong. China was so smart, they put in a security law. Mm -hmm. And of course, the West painted Hong Kong as, oh, a lot of freedoms are gone now, security mm -hmm. law. But, you know, out of 200 countries in the world, mm -hmm. 140 countries have security laws. It's very normal to have a normal. national security and law. I, and I. I've read Singapore security law, mm. I've read um, UK security law, US has 20 security laws, mm. three of them much stricter than Hong Kong. All the others are much stricter than Hong Kong. Right. So it's just rhetoric that these countries use, put a fear, you know, because it's politics, put a fear about Hong Kong mm. uh, having the security law. But mm. that really stabilized Hong Kong. And How it really has that helped with the business environment? Well, because it stabilized once and for all, you know, Mm. One thing that business likes is stability. Right. That is the most important thing in any business. When you have an unstable country, you have what's going on in Ukraine and Russia at the moment, it's sad. But or you had Afghanistan before, you can't do business in those countries. And so stability, it really brought stability back and really mm. put Hong Kong, the train had gone off the tracks before, put the train back on the tracks, you know so people could start living. Those people that weren't happy left. And of course, bad-mouthing Hong Kong abroad. And of course, uh, some of the governments love those people because they're saying bad things about China and about Hong Kong. But at the end of the day, we can see mm. Hong Kong is back on steroids, doing very, very well again. Business life in Hong Kong is very good. I get calls from many people in Australia and other countries, oh, why are you still in Hong Kong? Isn't it dangerous? And I said, I suggest you come here and see. Come there's, and see for yourself. There's no better place, no safer place. You know, I don't want to go back and trash the U.S. again, but I say out of 335 million people in the U.S., they have 465 million registered guns. Every day you have shootings. I mean, it's, it's, it's sad. You know, what's going on? This is not, you know, you can't have a country. It's not safe. I, would, I don't feel safe if I go there. Now mm -hmm. with drugs and mm -hmm. fentanyl and all that yes. problem, you know, mm. uh, people don't think clearly today. So it's dangerous, but that's what too much freedom, I've come to the conclusion, does not work. It's important that, you know, you live a good, safe life. And that's why I say there is no better place than Hong Kong. And I do believe China will be number, it's, it's number two in the world as far as at the moment, you know, 
US is number one, but I guarantee you, my prediction, five, six years from now, it'll be number one. And, and all those sanctions that everybody is so concerned about, especially by the US now, and chips mm. and semiconductors and all that, Nothing gave me more pleasure than having Huawei come out with their new Pro 16 telephone, you know, and now you was thinking, wow, where did the chips come from? You know? In the old days, I used to I give a lot of speeches at universities and, and high schools and that, you know, I used to tell the students, okay, go west, young man or young lady, go west and, you know, go to university there. And, you now and say go well. east. I now tell them to go east. I now mm -hmm. tell them because we have some of the, even in Hong Kong, we have uh, six of the top universities in Asia. China has many, great many top great universities, educational institutions. Mm -hmm. So this is the future and that's why I became Chinese because I like to be with a winner. And that's why I say to you with confidence, mm -hmm. Hong Kong is back. I don't worry about the future.